Good morning, good people. This is the March 2023 Vlog Muffin. Bubble Fudge here. On today's video, I bring you the engineering marvel that is the cardboard box. Built one of these little model kayaks for a customer. It's got to go down to New York. Building these, one of these kayaks is, is great fun. I really enjoy it. But building a box for it, a big pain in the ass. So the cardboard box, the lowly, humble cardboard box is a really a marvel of engineering when you get right down to it. You get a maximum amount of structure and protection with a minimum amount of weight. Cardboard is basically like a stress skin panel, you know? It's a little tiny I-beam, it's a truss, it's all those things combined. In the world of manufacturing, you know, you can knock these things out quick as bejesus, but when it comes to building one yourself, they're actually really challenging to build. Part of it is the materials. It's a great material, but it's a little bit difficult to work with in some ways. I was tasked with the challenge of making a box for this. Now, yes, I could buy a box for this. However, you can't buy one box to fit something like this, a long skinny tube of a box. You gotta buy 10 or 20 of them, which means that while I need a box that's worth maybe about five bucks, I gotta spend a good hundred bucks to get said box. And that just doesn't jive and Sure, if I was knocking these out every day, I would probably go ahead and order in a pile of boxes, but I don't. I had this one kayak to make. Maybe I get another order, maybe I don't, but I don't want to sit on boxes for months or years to come on the slim chance that I'm going to get another order for one of these kayaks anytime soon. Now that said, I'd love to get another order for one of these kayaks. I got a little bit of interest, but the fact of the matter is they're actually quite pricey to build. I charge about 500 US to build one of these models. It takes a good 10 or 12 hours. Building one of these is exactly the same as building the full size thing. The only thing I do different when I'm building my models is I just use one little dowel holding the deck beams in instead of two dowels. And that's just because it's, we don't have a lot of acreage here and I have to, uh, I'm always afraid of, I'm gonna weaken these things too much by putting in two dowels. So I just put the one in. And that's about it. That's really the only difference. Everything else I do exactly the same. I do the same lashings, I do the same knots, I do the same joinery, and I largely use the exact same tools, although in many cases I use smaller versions of them. So if you need to build a box for one of these things, it can be very frustrating. Of course, you need to find enough cardboard that is of a large enough size to do that, and if you're working with something that's small, you end up with a mess. So. You know, here's a great example of the kind of mess you end up with when you're trying to jury rig one box that's short into another box that's long and give it some structure. And well, I got about this far, then I just started screaming in frustration because it just wasn't coming together nicely. And I don't like sending out a piece of work that I've spent a bunch of time on to try and make it nice and then stick it in a janky looking box like that. I want the box itself to look re relatively decent too. So after screaming and shouting and throwing that other box at the wall a few times, I finally calmed myself down and tried to think about how I could build this box better. Okay, so the challenges of making cardboard boxes come down to the fact that we've got this, what's essentially like a stress skin panel. It doesn't want to bend in this direction it sort of bends in this direction, but only if you crease it properly. And if you crease it improperly, like over here on this side, just try and bend it, you get this janky looking wobbly crease that doesn't work worth a hoot. In a box making facility, they've of course got big presses that will stamp these things and create a good looking crease. I tried a couple methods. One of them was just using a roller here. This is like a, a roller for putting in window screens. And I messed around with just trying to roller a crease goes, but mostly I was getting this mess where it sort of just tear up, it would tear up the surface of the cardboard and really didn't do what I wanted it to do. And it didn't want to get a good crease going in either direction. Going this way, just tore it up again. So that was useless. I tried playing around with just a piece of thin wood and stamping it and that didn't work. This morning, this morning I came up with a different idea. And I happen to have a bunch of these pieces of uh, steel here that a friend of mine, he, um, he works at a, at a golf course maintaining their, their lawn oiling equipment. And so he, when he is done with the blades, they get to the point where they're not resharpenable anymore. He passes a couple of them on to me and they're beautiful pieces, tool steel. But anyway, I came up with this idea. 
of using this just like they would in a press to get dead blow mallet here. And look at that. I get a nice little nice little seam going that way. And if I want to do it the other way, I'm pretty much pretty sure you got to be careful that you're aligning it with one of the ribs inside. So if I try that, got a little breakthrough on that one. Got a little aggressive, I guess. That's not too bad either. It's not perfect, but at least it works. So I'll probably play around with that some more in the future. I tried playing around with putting like a board on the bench and bending up from a board and stuff like that. You basically need something that's almost like a, um, a finger break for sheet metal to do this kind of stuff properly, I suppose. But anyway, I came up with another way to do it yesterday. And I was really impressed with this. This worked really well. So I did took the time of drawing out my whole pattern of where I wanted flaps and things like that. The grain of my material, as we'll call it, is was running this way, okay? The kayak was gonna get built with the grain running in this direction. I kind of liked that idea because I, I was worried about crushing, and so having the grain run uh, perpendicular to the length of the boat meant I was gonna have a box that was particularly strong in this direction. Of course, now it has the chance of bending in the other direction a bit more easily, but I will get to that in just a sec. So what I came up with was the idea of scoring it on the outside of the box just halfway through. Now this is a double corrugated cardboard so it, unless you get you gotta play with it a little bit about the depth of your score before it will bend properly. Okay. There we go. So there we go, we get our bend, right? So that is a nice clean bend. However, we've got obviously some weaknesses. We just got one layer of paper. So here's what I did. First of all, just for belts and suspenders, took some packing tape and I laid it on the inside of our joint. That's just to reinforce that paper, make sure that it's not gonna tear easily. And then here's the little piece of brilliance that I came up with, at least I think it was kind of brilliant. And that is, I ripped some pieces of uh, spruce, just any old two by four, into little squares or rectangles, strips that represented the thickness of this cardboard. This one didn't cut quite as cleanly as I would like it to. The real example went a little bit better than this, but what I did was I laid this piece of wood into the joint. Okay. And with that done, took another piece of packing tape, laid it over top. And I came up with this. This nice strong, nice strong corner joint. It's reinforced both sides. And now I've able to was able to create basically a really nice structural corner really quickly and easily. Just a bit of packing tape. You could of course double tape those corners if you want. And I was really happy about that. I didn't really do the, the most uh, engineeringly beautiful job of closing up the ends, but that's beside the point. I thought this was a really great, great solution to the problem of trying to build a cardboard box. Now, of course, if you got to run the joint along the grain going in the other direction, uh, I suppose we could do that too. I'm not sure how easily that, that will work, not quite as easily, but the, the general principle should still apply. Or there, even just scoring it, I got a pretty reasonable joint. And then of course we could reinforce that, get the bend going and we could reinforce that with tape and get a nice looking structural joint that way as well. So not quite as pretty. I think if you, um, if you took your time to try and score that down to just the single layer, or if you're using a single corrugation cardboard, it'd probably be a bit easier. 
that will give you some good results. So that was a little bit of a victory. And I tell you, I screwed around with that other cardboard box piece of mess for way, way longer than it took me to try and knock out one using this little uh, wooden spline along the joints method. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was glue guns. If you're messing around with cardboard, a glue gun is pretty much your, your best friend a lot of the time. When I did my, which power tools do you need for boat building video, I talked about wanting a cordless glue gun and somebody turned me on to this company called Malif, Melif, M-E-L-L-I-F. These guys make a variety of tools that fit battery packs in Makita, DeWalt, and Milwaukee profiles, the 18 volt profiles. It was cheap, it was like 30 bucks US for this thing. It works beautifully. It's got a little on off button here, little indicator light telling you it's on. This thing comes up to heat in like two minutes and it feels, it feels pretty darn good to me. And um, you know, when you compare trying to use a glue gun that's corded where that cord is always fighting you because the gun weighs nothing. And so you're constantly kind of got your extension cord trying to rip the glue gun off the table, throw it onto the floor. That's absolute gold finding this. So uh, I'll put a link to the Millif website down in the description and they make a whole bunch of other interesting tools. Now this is not sponsored at all. I bought this gun with my own money and I've not, had no contact with the Malif people. But if you're out there and you're listening, I'd be very curious to uh, check out some of your other products. They've got some interesting like uh, power packs. So you take your battery and you add this little power docking station on there that's got a flashlight built into it, but then some USB ports. So you can use it like a, um, like a booster battery pack for your phone or any any little tool that you have. They've got some 18 volt to 12 volt conversion kits and they've even got some DC to AC conversion kits. So you can plug your, your DC battery into it and then you could run some AC, AC equipment, which is pretty interesting too. So uh, that's just a handful of the things that they have available. Another thing, if you're gonna play around with cardboard that I've found super useful is getting yourself a tape dispenser this one right here is made by Stumac. They're a luthier supply. I can't remember what they cost, 25 bucks, maybe something like that. And it, it's a really nice piece of kit. It's got a heavy 3 16 inch steel plate base. So it's got some weight to it. And the sides are fairly decent gauge stamped steel. I don't know, they're maybe, uh, I'm gonna say 18 or 20 gauge or something like that. And so just having your packing tape on a dispenser for doing things like wrapping molds for lamination and stuff like that is, is really a big game changer because it's a pain in the ass trying to pick off your tape off these rolls as you know. And uh, for years I've always made a habit of sort of folding over the end before I drop the roll, but it's an extra step that's a pain to do. So tape dispenser is a great thing to, to come up with. And this is sort of a, a, an interesting little design. I wonder, it could be fun to come up with a DIY version of this for sure. Now, say what you will about Apple, but they are hands down the most elegant box designers there ever was. This is not an unboxing vid, but just check this out. Little fabric handle on here. And watch this bit of origami here. You open that up. Got some blocking in there. No styrofoam came with this packaging. This is for a monitor. You got these little wings. They've got a little arrow on them telling you you're supposed to pull them out. Look at this. Woo! You pull those out. It opens this little guy. And out comes your brand new studio display monitor. And then Apple always has their accessories packaged up very neatly parked into the interior components. I mean, what a beautiful, I mean, what a beautiful piece of engineering this is. I mean, look at that. And even this guy, this is, was for the, the, the cable. It was very neatly all wrapped around here. Little instruction book in there, probably a sticker. I'm telling you, 
products. I love it. If you've never opened an Apple product before in your life, it's worth buying an Apple product just to try opening the box. I know, Steve is dead. Doesn't all work like it used to, that's for sure. But, whew, this is like so much fun every time. Every time. All right, that's all I got for you this week. Um, there might be a delay in the next Catalina Wary video. I got to go out of town for a bit. So, until next time. Have a dumb one. How about a knock? Keep it in the vice.